Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Stream Stealers. I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of Playbill, and today I have an extremely exciting guest. Uh, he was the star of the first Broadway show I ever saw, The Full Monty. Patrick Wilson is here. He's going to talk to us all about doing Broadway, uh, TV, film. Not only is he an amazing musical performer, he also led two of my favorite horror franchises of the last decade, Insidious and, or no, 15 years, I guess, Insidious and The Conjuring. And The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It, is going to come out this September. So let's talk to Patrick. That's, we're all doing this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, at this oh, point, yeah. it's like, no, it's September is feasible, so we will just carry on. I like anything. We carry on until we can't. I mean, I think that's the that's the position we're in. So we're um, we're we're full steam ahead until until we're told not to, you know. I mean, yeah, that's uh, across the board. But this is the third official Conjuring movie. Yes, but it's a uh, what nine nine movies in the franchise now? That's crazy. I do not know. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot, and I, 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 I knew we we would do a few of them if they worked. I, I didn't know there'd be all these uh, the the spinoffs, but uh, they've been even more. You know, the nun was more lucrative than Conjuring, so you know it is what it is. We just try to keep the flagship as uh, steady as as she goes. I mean, this is so. I, I one the Conjuring and the Conjuring two are two of the scariest movies I've ever seen in theaters. Yeah. And what makes those movies work so well are they hired you and Vera Farmiga to kind of ground it as Ed and Lorraine Warren. And I feel like they thought they were going to get something very different than what the two of you, like serious actors, served up. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I, how, how do you mean before I negate yeah, you? Uh, no, because both of you make them, in, in the best way possible, make them very strange people, very... <laughs> Well, very weird people. I mean, Vera's costumes as Lorraine alone with the ruffles and the jewelry. And our matching patterns. No, we 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 have to have that. No, but that's what they did. And so yeah. you know, if, if anything, <laughs> we and there are plenty of those stories where we were we were veering off a little too far into the strange. It was like, listen, guys, I know you want to you wanna you're all you're all actors and you wanna you wanna do your thing and Put your stamp but we still have to got to focus on this story because we love all that kooky stuff because they are kooky in a in a you know and 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 what we did is of course you take the kernel of them and 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 ed had passed away before i got to uh to know him obviously mm -hmm. and um but you know all these little things that we would you know we go and visit uh we go and visit lorraine when she was uh, alive obviously and you know little things like seeing chickens at her house and then coming back and telling james like James, we got to have chickens in the movie. There's chickens running around the house. So cut to, there have been five movies with like chickens in them now. So, um, but it's all that <laughs> stuff. It's all that character stuff, honestly, that I think um, between that and and what we've done, v uh, Vera and I have done with making, you know, we've made it our own relationship because uh, there's, you know, at some point we have to kind of diverge from, from uh, we only know so much about the history. So we have to make up our own. Um, and, and, and I think ultimately that's, that's what makes us, um, makes the relationship work is the chemistry that she and I have of playing off each other. And then yeah. that ultimately makes you care about these people. And then once, once you care about us, then we're in, you know, then we can kind of go as wacky as we need to be. Well, and, <laughs> I mean, the, the same is true with you and Rose Byrne with the Insid uh, Insidious movies, because the yeah. two of you had, and my favorite thing about Insidious, the first one is you guys did what everyone wants the couple to do in a horror movie, which is Move. the house is haunted and get the hell out of the house. I know. I know. Although easier said than done. Everybody's always like, why don't you move? And of course, I'm like, do you, do you want to move? No one wants to move. It's the worst. You really have to weigh the pros and cons of like, oh, well, you am do. I going to be haunted or do I have to pay movers again? Sons in a coma, trapped in the further. I don't know. We got a good deal on this place. I don't know if we're going to make our money back. I'd like to say we were renting. Really, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you and Rose had such a great chemistry for yeah. all those movies as well, and you you have the best leading ladies. I'm so lucky, man. When I, uh, if nothing else, if I had to hang it up today, I the the leading ladies that I've worked with, 
uh, are, 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 are the best in the business, uh, and some of the greatest people. So I've, I adore Rose, um, uh, and her husband and Bobby, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. so that's, uh, yeah, that was, that was a tremendous amount of fun. It was such a different experience cause they were so, you know, I know to audiences, they seem so similar, but to us that are, that are in them, they're so drastically different with the exception of it, of, the through line being horror, James Watt and me. Um, yeah. But in, in practicality alone, I mean, the, you know, the Conjuring was a, maybe a 30 million, we'll say 25, $30 million movie. Insidious was 1 million. So 30 times the amount of days basically and money, not really, but you know, we'd had a lot more time to shoot Conjuring and Insidious, we were, we were banging it out. Well, I mean, with Insidious, you use that whole budget on the two houses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had no... Yeah, we were all in. Uh, yeah, we were basically changing in the hallway, kind of a movie. Yeah, which is fine. It's all good. It's all what, good. what 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 has been so cool for me watching your career is I got to New York in time to see the Full Monty. It was my first Broadway show. I think awesome. it was um, like two weeks after nine eleven. Oh wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and so I saw my first Broadway show. But yeah, thank you. The, there's the Broadway thing of when you when you become a name on Broadway, you belong to the community forever. Yeah. And it has yeah. felt very much over the last few years like you are Broadway's guy who's killing it in these big budget movies. Oh. And the community's like, Patrick Wilson, he's a good dude. No, that's nice. We, ha I mean, I, and that was the same when I was starting out. And, you know, one of the first names for me, uh, Terry Mann, who was from Largo, which I grew up in Tampa Bay, and, and randomly, Terry's brother worked with my dad and TV. So it was like uh, Terry Mann and Angela Bassett kind of carried the torch for, for Tampa Bay. That was like, you know, and for me, remember, I'm, uh, I'm 46. So when I was in high school, Les Mis, the original cast, was um, he, he oh, the, yeah. greatest, the greatest recording ever. So that, and, and beyond that, you know, I think of Cats. So for me, Terrence Mann was like, Oh my God, the biggest guy. So then, and he was in movies. So you have these, um, I know what that feeling's like. I'm a, I'm a fan first. So I, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I applaud that too. I don't know. Is that the right phrase? I don't even know what I'm saying. Well, yeah. and I, I feel like, cause you made your Broadway de debut in the Gershwin's fascinating rhythm, which yes. is this show that not a ton of people know about, but the cast is stacked. It's great cast. Yeah. Cast is unbelievable. Orfe, Sada Ramirez, Michael Perez. I mean, um, uh, Darius De Haas. I mean, uh, Adrian Lennox. I mean, it was, it was insane. Absolutely insane. Just shows well, how a lot of talent in <laughs> this show can still suck, apparently. Yeah. Well, I mean, what was that like making your Broadway debut in something with though that song list, those people, and yeah. then to have it not run as long as one would have hoped well you know it's interesting so my first um new york uh, break i'll say was was bright lights big city which uh yeah. which was a colossal failure uh and in, in in terms of success in terms of financial success right it was to follow yeah. up to rent but i that is a terrible thing to say for paul scott goodman who had nothing to do with rent but you've got Michael Greif, all the designers, New York Theater Workshop, all these guys who they, you know, they want to work together again. It was a huge success. They have a great time working together. So let's yeah. do another show. So we got caught a lot in 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 the wake of that because uh, we had nothing to do with rent whatsoever. Um, my point of bringing that up is that I remember after the first night came, uh, first maybe you know, opening night and the reviews for the most part were, were pretty terrible. Um, and Michael Greif said to me, I'm sorry, um, I'll forget the exact words, but basically, um, I'm sorry for what could have been. And I remember thinking in hindsight, like, and I appreciated what he said. I, I love him dearly. Um, but it, I, and looking back on it as a, you know, older guy, it's like, well, I, I never knew what I, what a big hit of Bright Lights, Big City would have been like. So I wasn't downplaying it. it. It was what it was. And it was the same with Fascinating Rhythm. It was my Broadway debut. Uh, when I think about that time, I think about that great cast, that amazing score. My grandfather, I was very close to, passed away during tech. So it's all jumbled in my mind now 20 years ago. Um, so I have no hard feelings about it. It's just um, it was the tail end of those 90s jukebox musicals and there was no real through line and yeah. it just it just didn't work 
it just didn't work. And I knew it didn't work. I've told this story before, but I'll make it quick. When we <laughs> we were in previews or something, I mean, we only ran really in previews, um, but we were like a couple weeks into previews and this producer s- s- felt like he had fixed the whole show because if you bow and bring your hands up on eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you lift up, the audience will stand up with you. And we were all like, you know, if the show sucks for like an hour and a half, I don't think standing up on eight is going to get them to their feet. Uh, it did not. And we closed. It didn't work. <laughs> it's a true story. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like science to me. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. But that score was, oh, man, singing that music, even whatever it was, 30 times, was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then... What what was next for you? Uh, was it the full Monty? Um, next would have been I think I actually wait that would have been hold on that would have been ninety nine. No, next for that 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 fell apart in late spring. I think I went to uh, I think actually I went to La Jolla to do Sweet Bird of Youth with Michael again. So I did another show with Michael Greif, and then that's where I think Jack O'Brien had seen me in that. Uh, cause he was at the old globe at the time, 20 minutes away in San Diego. He, so I, I believe that's how he knew who I was. So he had seen me, I, I think he may tell a different story, but even though I, I auditioned for full Monty in the fall, I think he had seen me, uh, in Sweet Bird of Youth, uh, with Pamela Peyton Wright and, um, oh man, it's a great show. Loved it. That is a um, good show. I wish that would come back. That, I mean, that. Yeah, role for like a great actress to sing her. No, I know, I know, I agree. Um, yeah, so that, so yeah, the next musical I think I did would have been, um, would have, would have, would have been Full Monty a, a year from then. Yeah, I was kind of okay, most of the '90s. I was sort of just going musical, 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 play, throw a play in there. You know, I just, I was very fortunate to keep. I just went from job to job to job. You know. Well, and you toured the country as Billy Bigelow. Uh, like that yeah what a casual thing to do just sing soliloquy in a different theater with different acoustics a couple I times mean, a week. you know I, I i've told a lot of younger actors like what I, I you know i went to college went to carnegie mellon and and, and absolutely love my experience there and believe in education um uh, meaning in, in in studying theater um but the amount of <laughs> the amount of stuff you learn by doing a role 500 times uh, especially a role like that, you know, and you never quite feel like you licked it, you know, you, you, you really don't. I was, I was still looking for things on show 500. Like I, I yeah. haven't, I haven't gotten it right yet. Um, but what a great, uh, and, and I knew it. I mean, I come out of school st- like Anthony Warlow was my hero in college. Um, and, uh, for musical theater, certainly. And, and, and I knew when I got it, I was so thrilled to get it. But I was like, man, I'm getting the best role in musical theater at 22. Like, okay, it's, a, it's all downhill <laughs> from here. Uh, but it was, I mean, unbelievable, you know, and show. Then, and that production was great. With the full Monty, you guys just reunited on Stars in the House. We did. Yeah, I've, got, I've gotten to see them several times. Um, they came on when I did the show with Seth. Well, uh, 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 Johnny and... Uh, John Conley and Jason stopped in. Um, it's funny this past year we've kind of like we sang me, John, and uh, and then we got Yaz back to sing Big Ass Rock for this award that Andre was getting. Uh, so yeah, it was really you know if there's any bright spot in this situation, it's it's it's, it's being able to connect with that. It's been nice to see all these different casts connect because yeah. when do you do that? You just don't anymore. You know, well, I mean, and the people that Seth and James are getting on Stars in the House. I mean, the original cast of Melrose Place. I, <laughs> yes, awesome. please. I didn't know that. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. this is the content I'm starving for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we can just get Dukes of Hazard, I'll be happy. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, but I mean, what a wild time to be doing the full Monty because David yeah. has a tour, the great show. Uh, it was the producer season, so that was. Yeah. In the zeitgeist. And then 9-11 happens a few months later. And yeah. 
I mean, what a great show to be in when people needed that kind of show. It yes and yes and no. Yes, yes. Ultimately, yes, because you you it's important, and that's why I said thank you when when you, when I and I wasn't being flip about it when you said you came to see the show because you wanted. We knew people needed a reason to get out to get back. Yeah. Um, now I tell you, when you do a song like Big Ass Rock, that's about suicide and you're in new york and you those the images of uh, uh of 9 11 are you know we went to back we went back i think on a thursday maybe uh, yeah i think yeah it was it was it, very early I, it's earlier than people really remember it being because yeah it was and it was rough it was rough because you got n no laughs whatsoever you got laughs at like very sort of basic you know basic stuff but any of the any of the the dark humor which that show had a lot of oh yeah it just didn't land people just weren't 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 ready and that was okay we weren't like angry about it it was just such a learning experience to understand um and that you know and and I lived on 49th street and every day I would walk past uh Midtown Fire you know the fire station on between uh 48th and 47th on 9th and they would and several times on my commute back home, the trucks would be coming in and people would be applauding and you would just see this row of white boots because they were just covered in soot. And, you know, for a second, you'd, 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 you'd think, like, what do I do for a living, man? I, I sing and dance and this is ridiculous. And this, these guys are, are, are at, this, at this point still trying to find survivors. And then yeah. you'd go into the theater and you'd see an audience member laugh and you'd go, you know what? Maybe that's the first time that guy's laughed in 48 hours. So that's what I do. That's that's my job in all this. So if you all of a sudden, you know, and I'm careful to sort of put put actors and 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 theater on a on a pedestal, but it becomes, you know, if we didn't have Netflix and shows right now, we'd all be pretty tired and you know, pretty pretty bored as well. So that that but that that time specifically uh, would show me the importance of theater and specifically musical theater. Yeah, and I think I think that's a lesson that those of us who were in the city at that time have taken away, and that's kind of coming up again now during all of this. Like how yeah, and the wild creativeness that everyone is bringing to the table on with Instagram yeah. and the reunion shows and concerts and just throwing art at us and like, yeah, no, please let me let me offer what I can. Art finds a way. It always does. Always has. Whether it's in a time of crisis, whether it's in time of uh, without getting too deep in times of uh, of oppression look at uh, look at any any russian composer any uh, the great yeah. artist it, it usually comes out of that time where you just you had to pull together that's why it's it's been around for thousands of years and won't go away i i and i i'm like you i find it fascinating how we're all i mean i have spent more time down here, you know, this is my drum set that I've had since I was about 14, but I've been rolling through, I've bought new cymbals, I've recorded songs, I'm making, I have yet to put anything out because I'm still kind of shy, but I'm, I'm planning on it. I'm recording this thing that I've just, I played all the instruments on a track because I'm like, why not? I'll learn how to play it. So, um, how many my, instruments can you play? I didn't say well, I just said play. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't have, either. I grew up playing drums, obviously sing. I can, you know, because of studying piano at school, I, I can know enough chord structure to get around. I played rhythm guitar for a while. I can teach myself a terrible solo and, and bass. You can kind of figure out the meat and potatoes of it. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. But it's uh, I feel like this is what we've got to do. We, we just have to be yeah. we just have to be creative, whatever that means to you. My wife, we, her office is now turned to an art studio. She's maybe painted like four pictures in, in her life. Not really, but all of a sudden this quarantine every day, her artwork is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I'm, I'm serious. She paints all day long. She's a painter. Now my wife's a painter. No, just be careful that she doesn't paint a portrait of that nun because we know. How that gets <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I'm That's not scared of her. Real problem. I've, I've, I've dealt with her. She's fine. <laughs> Um, I mean, I have to, I have to bring up Brigadoon because I got to see that in 2017. Oh my God. You and Kelly O'Hara singing, uh, uh, almost like being in love. Mm -hmm. This can't be love. Yeah. Almost like being in love. This can't be love is from Boys from Syracuse. I, I always confuse the two songs because of Judy Garland. This can't be uh, love. Ah, yes. 
Yes. Uh, but when the two of you sang that beautiful song, I was just sobbing in the audience and I could not explain why, but it was just that perfect alchemy of yeah. performer and song and just moment. Yeah. What a glorious production that show was. It was awesome. We've waited like, you know, 20 years to work with each other. She she kind of came into the scene as I was starting to do more movies. So I yeah. just kind of, you know, I've sort of watched her from afar, sadly. Um, uh, but that was a dream. I mean, it's definitely, I mean, that cast was ridiculous. Um, yeah, that, that, that music is, is, is unbelievable. And it was a time I mean, I flirted around with that show for years. I, cause I was always fascinated by that show. Um, that was another production I wanted to do a while ago and it just seemed like the right time to do it. I wish actually we could have done it again. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah. They're tough. They're tough to do. They're but, tough uh, to do also because you got like two weeks and they keep raising the bar where it's like, Hey, and by the way, we're going to be off book. And you're like, re like the whole, like, yeah, 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 we're off book. So you learn, it's like, it was basically just summer stock. It was like, which is fine if like you're used to doing that all the time. It was a little rusty for me. So, <laughs> you know, that Tuesday night preview, of course, when the New York Times is there, yeah, I'm running off stage, still looking at like the next scene, trying to remember lines. Like, okay, I got it. Run. <laughs> it was, we were all like that, just trying to remember it. We'd never run through the show. So I any, any critic that comes on a first night of an encore is you just want to be like, come on, dude, give me a break. We're watching the rehearsal. Was just a row of people standing at mic stand at yes! microphones with music stands. Cut to Chicago. It's of course. I did my first I did an encore's uh tenderloin like 20 oh, years that's ago. Right. Yeah, it's a great the recording is awesome. I love the recording. So strange, such a weird show. Yeah. Um but you know they would dance. They do like a couple numbers. But we had our score. We had it. We never put because the the trick is you put your book down, then it looks like a polished show. And then some at some point they throw it out the window. Like no no, we just want to look like a polished show. But like yeah, but that Broadway show has been rehearsing for four months. We've had four days. <clears throat> you left town to do movies and TV, and they're like, all right, we can raise the bar now. Patrick's gone. We can That's get right. people who are going to memorize. Yeah yeah right right no. It actually felt probably felt more like TV because you know TV you're used to kind of cramming like eight pages of lines like all right let's go, you know you don't have time to practice. Well, I have to ask my favorite everyone's favorite question during this time, which is what are you watching these days? What am I watching? Um, well, Although right you have a full house, so do you even get to watch anything? I you know what I do is I'm going to give you two secrets that is going to delve into my into my life. Um, <laughs> I, I love, because I, this is going to sound so dumb, but uh, pretty much ever since doing Aquaman, where I was, where I was putting my body through a ton of, I just mess. It was just really rough on my body. And I work out like a fiend and I'm always a wreck. So I love to take Epsom salt. We back. thank you for that. We thank you for your service. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm, but I'm not getting any younger. So, uh, and, and I love an Epsom salt bath. So I love, I will, I'm right now I'm watching, uh, this is such a dumb guy thing, but the last dance, which is, um, the Michael Jordan documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I've, I'm, I'm caught up with that. The only thing this is now, this is true. I can't believe I'm about to say this because I can't stand reality te television. Like anytime reality is on, I leave the room. However, the only thing that will get my wife, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, my 13 year old, that's the real key. Cause he doesn't like to leave his room for much. My 13 year old and my mother-in-law. And now I'm into it is 90 day fiance. So that's the only thing that we can watch on Sunday nights that I know that will get my 13 year old to watch movies with us. Cause otherwise my man just wants to watch like, you know, uh, outer banks or whatever he's watching now. 90 day fiance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can say that in confidence because I, I don't watch any other reality. So it's not like I can like, like I, the bachelor, I can't, I can't stand any of that stuff. But for some reason, they're like, "Come on, we're gonna watch it." I'm like, "All right." And now I'm like, "Oh, Ed. oh my God! Of course, you just gotta leave. It's terrible." <laughs> I mean, once a year, I will choose one reality series, just right? totally random. It will just pique my interest, and I will go, I will go full bore on it. Right. And that happened last month with Netflix's Too Hot to Handle. Oh uh, yes, my wife got into that. I couldn't stomach it. 
Oh, no. I was so ashamed, but also delighted. <laughs> All in the day, I just brought my laptop into the bathroom so I could scrub the bathroom floor because <laughs> right. it was perfect for cleaning background. <laughs> right. Right. No, I get it. Hey, listen, man. Uh, it's all on the table right now. Whatever. Whatever gets you through it. Honestly. I know. I keep looking at like George Eliot's Middle March. And I'm like, oh, it's now when I'm finally going to read Middle March. <laughs> no, I'm going to watch six hours of Two Out to Handle. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You can get to it tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Um, all right. That is all the time that we have for the okay. installment of Stream Stealers. Uh, I do have to tell you, uh, Mr. Patrick Wilson, uh, my mother has a very strange reflex whenever your name is uh -oh. mentioned. She automatically says, best national anthem I've ever heard. Oh, she, what? Really? She hasn't heard Whitney Houston then. Whitney Houston's yeah. the best. But that's very sweet of her. Every time. I was like, oh, I'm going to talk to Patrick Wilson later today. Best national anthem I've ever heard. Do you know from where? From which one? I'm sorry. No, I'm so, I so lame that. now. Which one? Um, <laughs> so I'll get back to you so that you can put it on your Please reel. do. So I can go, oh, see? Oh, that's very sweet of her. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for joining. This was so much fun. Yeah. And like I said, I've been such a fan of yours for so long. And it's oh, thank you. nice to have you uh, talk to Playbill again. And hopefully, yes. please come back to Broadway when Broadway yes, comes Yes, yes. I, I definitely will. Absolutely. All right. And thank all of you for tuning in and The Conjuring 3, September. Hope so. <laughs> Goodbye. See you, buddy. Bye-bye.